Hi all. Today I am going to show you, how to build the support vector machine model, using TensorFlow in Spider IDE that is Python 3.6. I have used Spider IDE, as my platform to build the machine learning models. So, I am building the support vector machine model, to predict the classification of different species of flowers as per the given effective features, which are making potential impact on making a decision. What is support vector machine? A support vector machine, SVM, is a discriminative classifier formally defined by a separating hyperplane. In other words, given labeled training data, the algorithm outputs an optimal hyperplane which categorizes new examples. Support Vector Machine SVM, is a supervised machine learning algorithm, which can be used for both classification or regression challenges but mostly used for classification problems. In this algorithm, we plot each data item as a point in n-dimensional space, where n is number of features you have, with the value of each feature being the value of a particular coordinate. Then, we perform classification by finding the hyperplane that differentiate the two classes very well, for completing this process we need to have some prerequisites they are. JDK Spider IDE, Python version 3.6, 64-bit, version TensorFlow package, so, let's start by importing the dataset by name, Iris, from the library, sklearn where you can see the data and its attributes, total samples, number of classes or species of flowers. This is the iris dataset, with images of the species of flowers, and the relevant data parameters. In this scenario, I am considering petal width and sepal length as two features which has a potential to produce an impact on the prediction. Now, open the spider IDE and you can see the initial step starts with importing the packages that are required for building the code. I have used matplotlib library, for plotting the graphs, numpy to build arrays, tensorflow for building the model using tensors. To import the data, create a variable by name iris, and call the dataset from sklearn, by using datasets.load underscore iris. Next. Create a session object, which encapsulates the environment, in which all the operations are executed and graphs can be launched. So, sess is the object we have created and, call the object which is assigned to the function, tf.session. Then load the iris dataset into an object called iris by calling sklearn library. Classify the data into features and labels, where label is the target variable which is used for the prediction, based on the feature variables. So here I have considered sepal length and petal width as a featured data and species as a label. Features data is stored in the object, x underscore vowels, and labeled data is stored in the object, y underscore vowels. Since, the model we are building, is a supervised model, we are splitting the data into train set, and test set. So, 80% of the data is assigned, to the train set and 20% is assigned to the test set. The model is built using the train set data, and further the model performance is tested based on the test data. For each train set, and test set, the featured data and labeled data is taken, separately into the objects like x underscore vals underscore train, x underscore vals underscore test, y underscore vals underscore train y underscore vals underscore test for using them in further computations. Now, create the placeholders, and variables, and batch size, through which the computations of prediction occurs. Here the batch size is set to be as 100. Then create placeholders for the feature, x underscore data providing proper shape as, none, 2, and label, y underscore target shape as, none, 1 which will be utilized once the session starts running, as the data will be fed into this placeholders for required computations. None here represents that you can feed a number of rows to the placeholder. Then create model variables which are slope and constant of the linear equation, which are initialized, when session starts and the values gets adjusted to find the best fit line or hyperplane, by maximizing the margin which classifies the prediction. 
Now initiate the model building process by declaring a function to determine the model output which the classifies the data points and return the numbers greater than or equal to 1 if the target is CETOS a species and less than or equal to 1 otherwise. The function is built as model underscore output equals tf dot sub, tf dot matmol, x underscore data, a, b here the variables a, b are the slope and intercept values of the linear function. The feature data is multiplied with the intercept variable and the resultant is subtracted with the constant variable in order to obtain the output results. Next, we will declare the necessary components for the maximum loss function. For that, we first declare a function that calculates the L2 norm of a vector. Try to understand the concept of L2 norm to have proper understanding, on how the model behaves in the back end of code. Then, we add the margin parameter alpha. The loss function, will seek a linearly separable line but will allow for points crossing the margin line. This can be a hard or soft allowance, depending on the value of alpha. Larger values of alpha, result in more emphasis on widening the margin, and smaller values of alpha result in the model acting more like a hard margin, while allowing data points to cross the margin. Now finally we declare our loss function by adding it with the L2 norm of a vector and it is represented as loss equals tf dot add, classification u underscore term tf dot mol, alpha, l2 underscore norm. Now, we declare our prediction and accuracy function so that we can evaluate the accuracy on both training and test sets and it is written as follows, prediction equals tf dot sign, model underscore output, and accuracy equals tf dot reduce underscore mean, tf dot cast, tf dot equal, prediction, y underscore target tf.float32, next, you need to create the interactive scalars and histograms that are accessible in the tensorboard. It is a device where you could monitor or visualize the predicted results and the estimates of error analysis. In order to access histogram and scalars in the tensorboard a summary needs to be generated. So, for that I am taking all the summary functions using summary underscore op equals tf dot summary dot merge underscore all next in order to optimize the error value on the given train data gradient descent optimizer function is used which takes the error value and adjusts the predicted values with respect to the variables a b the resultant is stored in the object my underscore opt and it is written as my underscore opt equals tf dot train dot gradient descent optimizer learning underscore rate. Now, we apply this function to the loss object where the error obtained from the loss function is minimized and adjusts the slope and intercept values and calculates classification model for every iteration we provide with respect to the data values. The function is written as, train underscore step equals my underscore opt dot minimize, loss. Next, in order to utilize the variables you have created, First you need to initialize the variables. To initialize all the variables in one go, call tf.global underscore variables underscore initializer, assigned to the object init which needs to be started, by using ses.run, init. Now we need to feed the data into the train and test set utilizing the placeholders and the initialized variables are used to perform computations and calculates the error rate with respect to slope and intercept of the SVM model. So initially, create three list objects named as loss underscore vec, training underscore accuracy, test underscore accuracy. This objects are utilized in the computations to append the results that are generated from the loss and accuracy and further used for plotting the graphs. As you can see, a for loop is created providing the iteration range as 5000 and the new objects are created to access the feeding data with respect to the batch size by name rand underscore index, rand underscore x and rand underscore y. All the functions are called inside the loop such as loss function, train accuracy, test accuracy and summary function of histogram and scalars by feeding the train and test data to perform computations by the running the session using ses.run. 
for every iteration a record will be inserted from the train and test data and all the computations are performed and results are appended into LUS underscore VEC, training underscore accuracy, test underscore accuracy. For every iteration of the loop, the results obtained are stored in the event file which is accessed by the tensor board for developing the computational graphs and it is done by calling the function as writer equals tf.summary.filewriter, folder location, says.graph. This event file is stored in a physical location by creating a temp folder in the local C drive within which a folder by name svm underscore logs. Let us execute the code now and you will find the variable slope as A, intercept as B, train loss, test loss, and accuracy of the model are displayed for every iteration of the loop in the output console. You can find that the accuracy of the model is determined as 97.5%. You can also visualize the SVM plots where the red linear line is shown as a best fit line classifier which classifies the data by maximizing the margin based on the species of flowers. So the blue dots indicates the data points falls under the region of C. Tosa species and other side of the region has the orange marks considered to be from another species and you can see the classifier best fit line has effectively divided the data in two regions with an accuracy of 97.5%. You can also visualize the graph in the console for the train and test accuracies of the model and both accuracies are compared with each other and found to be effective and then you can visualize the loss generated with every iteration and how we have minimized the error by the reducing the loss value as shown in the graph. Now in order to connect to the tensor board go to the location where you have file location which you have specified in file writer function as shown and copy the location. Open command prompt and run the command as shown tensor board log dear c colon backslash temp backslash tensor logs backslash svm underscore logs port 6060. A portal address is generated to access tensor board which access the event files that are generated in the given file location and it is shown as e123 pc colon 6060. Open the web browser and access the portal where you can find the tensor board with all dashboards. Now you can see the computational graphs where you can monitor all the operation nodes with respect to the variables and mathematical functions developed for computations. You can also monitor the train data and residual losses in the histograms which shows the gradual increase or decrease of the error levels. This completes the step-by-step -step procedure of building the support vector machine model using TensorFlow. That's all for this video, for any queries please reach us at vj.ready at sangam.ai.